Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Kingfisher's YouTube channel once again. Today I'm going to be doing a single trace with a single hook with single nylon. Basically what I've been asked to do is one trace for wintertime fishing. Okay, so what we require for this trace of mine is going to be a 7-0 tuna circle, a number 3 power swivel, and of course I've chosen the Kingfisher Advanced line, it's the fluorocarbon line, as the line of choice to make this single trace with. This is 20 kilos, okay. We also need a pair of mustard scissors to cut the line, some 130 pound Dacron and of course one or two um, cable ties depending on which baits we're going to be making with this trace. Okay, so let's quickly start off some of our fluorocarbon advanced 20 kilo. Okay, so we take about 60 to 80 centimeters of it. Just going to quickly cut it here. Now, this trace that I'm going to be doing to start off with is going to be a universal trace. So live bait or dead baits. So we're just going to quickly snell our hook here. So we go through the eye. And the easiest way to do it for me would be to do a figure of eight around the shank of the hook. So we just go around one, two, three, four times. Take it off, take the tag in and stick it in through the back, like so. And then all we do with our fingers is just pull the line down. I'll drop that one, and there we go. There's the figure of eight forming. There it is, pull tight. And all I'm going to do now is just lubricate it and pull the knot tight. And there we go. So our knot is done. Always remember when doing it, that the nylon must come through the bottom. Very important that the nylon comes through the bottom when you actually snell it. Okay. So I'm going to make that about 50 centimeters in length. So that's where I want my swivel to be at the end of the day. We go through. <clears throat> and again, all I'm going to do is a simple figure of eight knot. So go around one, two, three times, take it through the back, come out, pull the knot tight, there we go, lubricate, slide down. And to pull the knot tight and to lock it in place, all we do is we just put our hook over it, pull against it, and there we go. It's now nice and tight, cut that off. There is our finished trace. So what we're going to do now to rig our bait is to take a little bit of Dacron. I'm just going to cut a piece off there. And all I'm going to do is just burn the end bit a bit. There we go. We then take it and go through like so, hold it in place and we go through for a second time through the center and we slide it onto and over the bob of the actual hook. And just wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, so you wiggle it, wiggle it, wiggle it, until <laughs> it goes over. Give yourself a little bit to play with so that would be the ideal length that you want it to be. Put the hook back through at the point. And then what we do is we take the second bit and we just go over it again. All that does is just secure it twice. So for throwing purposes, it won't come loose. You can throw as hard as you want and it won't come loose. And again, all we're going to do is just melt off that a little bit there. Like that. 
So now what you have is a bridle rig. There we go, so it's pretty much a bridle rig. We're then gonna take our live bait, whether it be a moss bunker, shad, mullet, mackerel, doesn't make a difference. Everything stays exactly the same. So that is the, the hook snoot part of it. For a live bait, we'd use a running trace. So from here, your leader would go on, your swivel will go on. So you can either use a cone sinker, you can use a grapnel sinker, doesn't matter, it's up to you depending on the current. I'm just gonna use some of our 20 kilo, 22 kilo Kingfisher for our sinker snoot. And it's pretty much the same length as our hook trace. I'll tie the sinker on quickly. And again, everything's figure of eight. So easy, one knot does it all. And we'll just measure it out to make sure it's about the same length. Perfect. Grab another number three power swivel. Tie that onto our sliding sinker. And again, it's just a figure of eight, guys. That's all it is. Nothing fancy. It's the same length. There we go. Now, bearing in mind our leader's coming down from our rod. Go through the eye of the swivel and we attach our trace. And again, it's a figure of eight. You can put a bead in between if you want to protect your knots. But that is it. Okay. So there is the sliding trace. And my sinker trace is too long, so I'm just going to cut it down a little bit more. And it's important that you keep the sinker and the hook trace the same length because when you're throwing a live bait, you don't want it spinning in the air or wrapping around the line. So if you keep it the same length, generally, it doesn't tangle. Okay, so let's have a look here quickly, see if it's right yet. Here we go, here we go. And that is perfect. Because once I've got my live bait on you, it'll be the same length as the sinker. It's what we're looking to achieve. Okay, so now to rig a live bait, and again, like I said, it can be a mullet, it can be a mozzie, it can be any live bait, quarantine if you want. Okay, on all fish, quarantine, mullet, mozzies, shad, mackerel, you've got the eye, I'm just gonna use you this, you've got the eye over here that runs in that area there, you've got a hard plate that runs above the eye. So what you want to do is you want to take your cable tie and go in just above the eye, under that hard plate and come out on the top. Doesn't matter what bait it is, I'm telling you this again. Quarantine, mackerel, shad, they all exactly the same. Okay, so what we do, because the cable tie is very, very soft on the top, we cut it at an angle like that to give it a sharper point and it becomes a lot more stiffer or rigid. We then take our cable tie with our live bait, we go under the eye and we push it through and you'll see how it comes out over there. It doesn't kill the fish. It doesn't kill your live bait at all. Take our Dacron, go over that or through the loop, I'll show you again. We'll just do it this way so you can see it goes over there. You take your um, cable tie, stick it through. I'm just gonna use this to hold it. Pull it down. There we go, cut that off. 
and there's our live bait swimming around. The nice part about this is when you throw it into the actual current, the, the live bait will always swim into the actual current. So it'll move around like that. So whether you're fishing for a cob or a garrick, doesn't really make a difference. Um, the live bait will stay alive, the garrick will come and eat it, obviously he's in head first, the same as a cob. They swim off, hence the running tray. So as they swim off, you just let the rod go down, let them take up the slack, hold, and the fish will hook himself. Once the rod is straight, you can lean into it and your, your garrick or your cob will be on. It's an easy trace, it works extremely well. Now, if you were on the boat, kayak, whatever it might be, we'll just take the sinker off. And again, it's a lovely trace for the kayak fishermen. All the ski boaters fishing for Garrick. There's the exact same trace, same length, nothing changes. All we do is attach our leader to the trace. Okay, so there we go. There's your trawling trace now. Pretty much done from the swivel to your leader on the kayak or on the jet ski or ski boat trawling for a garrick. And again, if you're fishing for cob, all you do is put your sinker on, drop it to the bottom if off the reef and that, and just sit there and wait for that dog to eat it. Gong, gong, gong. And he goes away. You tighten up on him. You don't hit. You just wind into him. And uh, yeah, same trace. We'll do the exact same thing, whether you're on a ski boat or a paddle ski or rock and surf throwing. One trace for winter time for KZN's fishing. Done. Guys, it's as simple as that. It's easy, easy, easy.